Congratulations on getting a postdoc interview. Now, academics are weird, so the interview is also going to be weird. But I've got the five different categories and the regular questions that you're likely going to be asked so you can prepare. So the first one is getting to know you. Getting to know you is kind of the first stage of any PhD or postdoc interview because it's just the icebreaker. Academics are gonna be weird. Imagine going into an interview and you've got all academics sat there and someone with the highest social capability is gonna start asking you questions. And they normally ask with getting to know you questions. And the most dreaded one is, tell me a little bit about yourself. In my opinion, that's very lazy, but here's other ones that they could potentially ask you. So, why are you interested in this postdoc position? What are your strong or weak points? Do you have any annoying qualities and anything else we should know about you? So getting to know you is that first step. But the problem is, is that when you're answering this question, you don't start broad. You don't say like, well, I'm Andy, I'm a cancer. No, you don't start like that. You have to just be completely focused on the postdoc. They're not really interested in you as a person. They are interested in you so that you can get them what they need to progress in their career. Career. That's papers and money. So you need to kind of like be a little bit sneaky and frame your answers around, well, you know, I've done this research, I've got this research background, I've published these papers, these things are very important to me, blah, 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 because then you're going to set off the interview on the right tone and they'll understand that you are working with them to further your career and their career at the same time. Now, so you can be asked these more sort of tricky ones, which is like, do you have any annoying qualities? What annoyed you in others? So that that can be a little bit of a sort of like question early on just to see how you respond to criticism because what they're also looking for in this getting to know you is coachability. So a good interviewer will also just try to work out what sort of person you are under pressure. So by throwing in a bit of a weird one, like do you have any annoying qualities or what annoyed you about others, they are looking for you to think on your feet. It's an annoying thing. Look at me. I'm now annoyed. This annoys me. It's an annoying thing when they do that, but I can see why they do it. So you just need to be ready for those next level questions to make sure that you're prepared. Take all of these, come up with a very, very simple answer to all of them. And I think if you've covered most of these, you're going to be ready for the getting to know you questions. The open-ended ones are the most annoying, but keep it simple, keep it short. Just sort of like three or four little facts about you that's related to your professional life and your postdoc that also gives them a hint that you aren't an idiot, essentially. So that's the first topic. The second thing they want to know about is your past research experience. Now, after we've got over the kind of getting to know you section, they'll want to know more about your research experience. It's a natural progression and what they'll ask about. So you need to make sure that you're familiar with the stuff you've done in the past, but more importantly, the stuff that you've done in the past that relates to this current postdoc. So when I was doing my interview with five academics over the phone, I made sure that I knew what the position was kind of about. I kind of knew it was about transparent electrode materials and I had to make sure that the transferable skills from my PhD were mentioned in sort of like light of transparent electrodes. So these are sort of questions they'll ask. So tell me about your doctoral dissertation. They are not interested in everything, like I said, just the transferable skills. Tell me about one, two projects of yours that you found most interesting. What was your contribution? So this is them just trying to get a gauge of whether or not you're enthusiastic. And let me tell you this. They are also getting a sense of feeling from you. They're absorbing your energy, so to speak, so that you need to kind of talk about this in a very sort of enthusiastic way. So be happy with what you've done in the past. Be proud of what you've done in the past. Be confident that you can do that again. Be excited for what you could do going forward. Those are the sort of things they're interested in with this sort of like past experience. They want you to be a good member of their team, of their research group, and they don't want sort of a sad sap that is a little bit over everything and was a bit annoyed by how everything went in your doctoral dissertation. Even if you had a horrible time in your PhD, this is your time to pull out all of those little bits of gold.
Bonk. And just make sure that you talk about the good things, all right? Don't complain. Other academics love to complain, don't we? There's also this, can you work on a project from scratch? So when you're going from PhD to postdoc, it's the first time you're probably just handed a project and going like, go for it, good luck. Even if you haven't got direct sort of like um, experience with a full project, there is probably little aspects of your PhD or your past experience that you've done from scratch. So make sure you can talk about that. And also, how did you ensure your your research stays current with the latest developments in the field. So this is just trying to make sure that you understand how to keep up to date with the field and to sort of like mold your approach to a particular field based on the current trends because that's very important in academia. And so your past research experience is making sure that you've just got that foundation of excitement and interest in this field, but also that you have got some evidence behind you as to like, you won't just screw up this postdoc completely talk enthusiastically, talk confidently about the stuff you've done in the past, and uh, I think you can't really go wrong because you'll be sending out those positive oh, vibes. Right. Boop, 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 but don't dance. The next section that we're gonna to wanna to talk about is your skills and abilities. Your skills and abilities really is the stuff that you know that they want. So this could be specific techniques, specific methods, specific modes of operation of particular fields. It needs to be the nuts and bolts. Now, here's the thing about this section, is that the people that are interviewing you have their own preferences, their own slant, their own um, research field. So what I like to do if I know who's interviewing me is I will go and look at their particular technical knowledge and understanding, and then I'll make sure that I talk about the things that overlap with theirs. It's about giving that awesome feeling to them. And if you're talking about what they love doing, then it can only be a good thing. So skills and abilities, it's this sort of stuff thereafter. Can you describe the key methodologies and techniques you use during your research? So this is when we're talking about the actual nuts and bolts. What stuff are you trained on? What methods did you use? What software are you using? All of that is very, very important. And just try to have a look at some past papers to see what they've used and uh, try to align your answer with those. Um, how do you approach learning and implementing new research technologies or software? So essentially, can you learn new things? That is really what they're after. How do you ensure the reducibility and reliability of experimental results. Well, this is just making sure that you do understand a little bit about, you know, the scientific or research process to make sure that in a particular field, you're not just gonna produce rubbish results. And then this is probably the most important, which is what advanced equipment or instruments are you proficient in operating and how have you used them in your research? So when I did my PhD, I got trained up on a load of instruments for nanotechnology and I had to talk specifically about those things. Atomic force microscopy, scanning electron microscopy, TEM, optical microscopy, all of these things that were so important for the postdoc, they needed to know that we weren't gonna spend ages training me up on a piece of equipment or that I had transferable skills from one piece of equipment like the scanning electron microscope and I could put it into the transmission electron microscope. You know, those things are very, um, uh, there's a lot of skills that you can swap in between the two. But nonetheless, this is what they're interested here, the nuts and bolts. And I highly recommend that you stalk the shit out of the people that are interviewing you if you know who they are so that you can talk to the skills and experience that they've got, find that overlap, everyone get the nice little warm fuzzies deep down below. Ooh, that feels good. As we head into the later parts of the interview, they may start asking you pointed questions. Those pointed questions are essentially a sign that like they've gone through all of the stuff they need to do, but now they're really testing you. When I've done these sort of like postdoc interviews in the past, these really haven't come up because I've kind of had a warm introduction to people. They know that I don't need to be poked and prod, I have the skills, but this can happen if they do just need to work out what sort of person you are. So probably problem solving and challenges. This is where they'll talk about failed results. This is where they'll talk about what you would do if something failed. Then we'll talk about motivation. How do you stay motivated? And how do you approach troubleshooting experiments that are not yielding expected results? All of these are so very, very important. And it's something that a lot of us take for granted as researchers, but this is them just making sure that you can sort of like handle the pressure and that you do have at least some idea of overcoming problems. Once again, we need to sort of like talk about 
these in a positive light. So talk about a time in the past when you've overcome problems. Talk about times in the past when you've um, changed experimental direction because something's not quite going the way you expect it to go. All of those are very, very important stuff. Um, and stay positive. Stay very, very positive because no one wants a boring sad sap on their team who's just going to suck the energy from any lab they work in. So make sure you stay positive even though you're talking about problems and challenges. Always talk about it in terms of the solutions that you've brung and that will just make them feel comfortable and warm because that's what it's all about. Yeah. The last part of the interview is actually one of my favorite because everyone breathes a sigh of relief. <sighs> like the interviewers are like, okay, we've got another one in the bag. This is going well or, or like, it's not going well. We need to wrap it up. Um, and you're just knowing it's coming to an end because the rate of questions have slowed down. People are getting a little bit bored of being in the same sort of room talking about things for an hour. And so these wrap up questions really are just short and sweet answers, stuff that you should have an answer to um, but it isn't going to go on for like 30 minutes you know so the wrap-up questions are a great sign that uh, things are going to end and if you get these sort of questions it's normally going to end well for you so you've got had any questions for us is so common and so you do just have to have some backup questions about questions you have for them um, and I always just ask about oh you know what sort of stuff would I be involved in with the department so one thing I like to do when they say any questions for us is I like to put in their mind that I'm already in the job. So I was, I'd be like, okay, what would the first week look like? What would the first month look like? How many papers per year would you expect? Like then they're starting to think about you as this doer, as this outcome orientated person. And also just stuff like, you know, how would I contribute more broadly to the um, community in the department, in the group, whatever it is. So make sure you've got just simple questions that make them see you already in the job. There's a great bit of social engineering and it works wonders. All right, do you have any questions for us? Is there anything you'd like to share that we haven't covered? And if there is something, just make sure it's sharp and sweet and that it is a highlight. No one likes a boaster, no one likes to go, oh, by the way, I did all these things. If it hasn't come up naturally, don't force it. But there, if, if there is something that you feel like is important, like there's a particular technique or skill that hasn't been mentioned or a particular area of your expertise that you think you could translate late to the current postdoc you're interviewing for, bring it up. But once again, just make it short and sharp. These wrap up questions, everyone's over it. You don't want to keep them there for ages. This isn't about you spending another half an hour talking about something. This is just, oh, I'd just like to mention that during my PhD, I also did these things. And I think that'd be a great thing to bring across to the postdoc. But um, yeah, well, you know, if, if I was going to be the uh, fortunate candidate, get the job, I'd love to talk about that further. Something like that is just short, shut, shop, shop, ship, shop, shop. You get the idea. Okay, and then we've got, what are your expectations from this postdoc position? How soon are you available to start? And also, do you have any concerns about this position that we can address? Um, essentially, you just have to have very simple, positive answers to those. So do you have any concerns about this position that we can address? Obviously, don't take a job that you've got serious concern about. So really, that should be, no, not really. I'm looking forward to starting. Um, I would love to, you know, meet some more of the team if that's possible before I start. Something just positive and nice and sort of like group focus would be be awesome. How soon are you available to start if selected? As soon as possible. In university terms, that means in about three months time because the bureaucracy in red tape is uh uh, suffocating, that's the word. Okay, and then what are your expectations from this postdoc position? Your expectations is their expectations. <laughs> their expectation is you get a load of papers and you get funding. That is now your expectation. So oh, this would be a great opportunity for me to publish lots of papers and work with a really well-respected team here in whatever university you're doing um, the interview at. And uh, that's it, really. You want to align their goals with your goals, so you just parrot back to them what they want to hear. They get those warm and fuzzies again deep down below, just near the just near the anus. <laughs> no, it, uh, yeah, that's it really. So there we are. That's the wrap up questions. Um, any top tips I've got for you is um, relax. Remember to smile. I think there's one thing that really got me through a lot of postdoc interviews and I had two or three, I think three. And that is just smile. Just enjoy yourself. Just make sure you're talking positively. Be enthusiastic. Um, and also if you're doing a phone interview like one of mine was, I had a piece of paper just near me and I jotted down all of the names of the researchers in the order they 
introduce themselves. Um, I highly recommend that you also stalk their um, pages, go read some of their papers, um, and just make sure you're well prepared. It's amazing to me how just those simple things sort of dropped into conversation can make people warm up to you. And that's about it, really. So those are how you absolutely kill your postdoc interview. Good luck. Let me know in the comments what questions you got asked because that will help people in the future watching this video. Boom. If you like this video, go check out this one where I talk about postdocs unplugged, the truth revealed about postdocs. I think you'll love it.